My husband, George, got my friend Rachel pregnant. Oh, come on. What's with your face? It's your fault that you're infertile, you know? If you want alimony, I'll give it to you. Is $20,000 enough? Don't come after me because you get lonely, okay? Because that would be really annoying. Sorry about that. Sorry I took George away from you. Anyways, we're going to be happy from now on. Make sure to congratulate us. My friend, Rachel, patted her belly lovingly. Looking at her big belly, I put my hand on my chin. I thought to myself, Hmm? Something's wrong. And after thinking for a while, I said, Oh, I see. That's how it is. What? What is up with you all of a sudden? I smiled to myself as I saw the truth behind her actions. My name is Diana. I live with my husband George in a rental apartment. I met George at my previous workplace. We were in different departments and joined the company at different times, but we met when we happened to sit next to each other at the company's year-end party. George had a gentle personality and was able to interact with everyone regardless of the department that they were in. I liked that about him and he liked me and so we began to go out. We had a few fights but after two years of dating each other we got married and have been married for three years. And currently we have no children. It's not because we decided not to have children. Both George and I have a great desire to have children. We have talked about it throughout our relationship and both George and I love children. I quit my job to become a housewife, but unfortunately, we have never been able to have a child. I was well aware that having a child is not something that can be achieved only by the desire to have one, but when I wasn't able to get pregnant after trying so hard to get pregnant, I felt that my spirit was slowly being sapped away. On top of that, Emily, who is my mother-in-law, lives nearby, visited me unannounced every day and kept pressuring me to have children. I thought she was a good mother-in-law when we first got married because she cared about many things, but she became more aggressive about me being pregnant as time went by. She was not only pressuring me to get pregnant, but she also took my things without permission, complained about the food I cooked, and was always picking on me. The other day, she took all my jewelry bags and clothes claiming that she would help me clean up. Emily! Those are my clothes. I'm still using them, so please don't take them without my permission. What are you even saying? You don't even fulfill your duties as a wife, so aren't you ashamed of yourself buying all these luxurious things? I will use these accessories for you, so be thankful about that. Ugh, I really feel sorry for George. I really feel sorry for him for being tricked into the relationship by a woman like you. You can't get pregnant so you're not fit to be a wife. Just break up with George and get out of our lives. No matter what I said, Emily would never listen to me. George, who was also there, did not stop Emily but rather seemed to agree with her. It's not like I just sat idly by it with my fingers crossed when they pressured me to get pregnant. I went to the OBGYN several times. After various tests, there was nothing wrong with my body. So, I thought that there might be something wrong with George's side, and I recommended that he undergo tests, but he wouldn't listen to me. On the contrary, he had completely accepted his mother's wisdom that infertility is a problem on the women's side, and the situation never got better. One day, after all this had happened, George came home from work with an unusually serious look on his face and asked me to sit down. Diana, I've got to tell you something. Can you please listen to what I have to say? What? 
Why are you being like this all of a sudden? I was going to make dinner, so does it have to be now? George stopped me as I was heading for the kitchen and sat me down on the sofa in the living room. He was sitting cross legged on the carpet. Then, after about 10 seconds of silence, he opened his mouth. Actually, she's pregnant, so please break up with me. If you want alimony, I'll give it to you. Is $20,000 enough? I'm sure you'd understand, Diana. I've always wanted a child. So like mom said, I don't want a wife who can't get pregnant. I didn't understand what was being said. All I could say was, huh? What? And no other words came out. I was so stunned, and George began to repeat what he had said. So, I will have a baby with someone else because you wouldn't get pregnant. Well, I feel bad that I made a baby with someone else, even when we haven't had a divorce yet. But, that's just the way it is, so I'll pay you alimony. But, you have to know that it's all your fault, you know, Diana. If only you had gotten pregnant, this wouldn't have ever happened. I couldn't understand at all about the situation, no matter how many times I have been told. Is he really an adult? Where in the world has the gentle George who I fell in love with go? While holding my head because of the migraine I had from listening to him, I asked the one question which was bothering me the most. Who, who is the other girl? How long have you had that kind of relationship? It's Rachel. You remember, she's your ex-co-worker. When I told her you were having troubles to get pregnant, she suggested that she would. George answered the question easily with a nonchalant look on his face. Rachel and I had joined the company at the same time, and we were reasonably close. She had even come to the wedding I had with George, and it was Rachel who gave me a push when I was wondering if I should go out with George in the first place. The worst kind of betrayal left me in darkness. The OBGYN had checked her the other day and they said that the baby is a boy. Oh, I'm so excited to have the baby. I want to play catch and go camping and stuff when he's older. Finally, my long time dream is coming true. George was being very happy despite my shock. Does your mother know about this? I asked him, and he nodded his head. Of course, I already told her. Mom is so happy to finally have a grandchild. I'm getting ready to move in with Rachel too, and we're all getting prepared. As soon as you and I get divorced, we're gonna move in together. It seemed that they were already talking on the premise that I would agree to the divorce. At that moment, the doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone to visit, but George says, Oh, she's here, and hurried to the front door. Then, he quickly returned to the living room. To my surprise, Rachel was right behind George. Rachel was clinging onto his arm, smiling and laughing. <laughs> Sorry, Diana, for getting pregnant. George insisted on wanting to have a child so bad that I decided to support him. I heard from George, you know, that you can't get pregnant, right? Well, that can't be helped. It's your fault for not being able to get pregnant, Diana. Rachel was saying crazy things while patting her belly lovingly. Her belly looked very big. Are you sure that the baby in your belly is really the child of you and George? When I said that, Rachel's nostrils flared up and she says, Of course! loudly. Yes, of course. This child is mine and Rachel's. Don't be sarcastic just because you couldn't get pregnant. Right, Rachel? Rachel, who had just assured me that it was their child, seemed to be looking at me with a somewhat worried look in her eyes. 
Y yes that's right. Of course it's mine and George's child. I can't believe you even questioned me. I see. Well, I thought to myself that if that's the case, I'll accept the divorce. With that, I hired a lawyer and decided to file for alimony against both of them. Thanks to the lawyer, I was able to get over $20,000 in alimony and the divorce was finalized without any delay. I decided to move back to my parents' house because I didn't want to be near George and his family. I am sure that the truth will come out soon. A year had passed since then. I found a job soon after returning to my parents' home and I was living in peace with my parents. I was at peace, remembering less and less of the horrible things that had happened to me. On that day, I went to work in the morning and came home around 7pm and I saw someone hanging around in front of my house. Who could it be? I wondered and as I approached, I saw that they had noticed me and immediately called out to me. Oh. Diana, where were you? Oh, I was waiting for you all this time. It was George and his mother who were wandering around and acting suspiciously. They had come here on their own without any prior notice and they were acting like fools. What are you both doing here? We're not a married couple anymore, so we have no business with each other anymore. Saying this, I tried to squeeze my way between the two of them and enter the house, but I was blocked by being grabbed by my arm. What's with your attitude? We've come out all the way here, so I'm never leaving until you listen to what I have to say. Then, George started talking about what had happened after the divorce. There was a lot of complaining and other unrelated talks, but to summarize, it seems that he was deceived by Rachel. Rachel had been very supportive to George and Emily when she first moved in with them. By doing house chores and taking care of Emily, but after the birth of their child, she changed drastically. She left all the housework to Emily because she was physically exhausted and she spent all day online shopping and only took care of the child when she felt like it. There were also concerns about the newborn child. The child did not resemble George at all. Unable to shake off her suspicions, Emily conducted a DNA test without telling Rachel and found that the child was not related to George. When George had questioned her, Rachel simply took the child and left the next night. I understand the situation, but what does that have to do with me? A woman who can't even get pregnant with a child is an unfit wife, right? You still care about that? Don't be stubborn. Let's start over again. Mom is getting older and she says it's hard for her to do the house chores every day and I quit my job and do a part-time job so our finances are tight. We're divorced, but we used to be a family. So let's help each other out here. Right? Apparently, when we were getting divorced, I sent a letter to George's company of what had happened, which led to rumors about what was going on and he ended up leaving the company. In other words, these two are trying to make me their ATM and a housekeeper. Seriously, how low can they get? When I was dumbfounded and remained silent, Emily, who took the advantage of the situation, opened her mouth. If you're back at your parents' house, you haven't remarried yet, have you? Well, I'm not surprised at all. The only one who will marry a helpless woman like you is my kind son, George. Now hurry up and pack your bags and come with us. From the way Emily spoke, it seemed that she was still treating me like an unfit wife. I could only think that she was taking advantage of me to have such an arrogant attitude when they were the ones who were in a position to ask for help. It's about time I put an end to this around here. I see, so that's what happened. Come to think of it, 
you haven't apologized to me at all yet. If you get down on your knees and apologize, I'll maybe consider getting back together with you. What do you say? Had they never thought that I would say something like this? George and Emily looked at each other in surprise. Then Emily shouted, Why should I apologize to you? But George stopped her. He probably decided that this time it was better to apologize honestly. George pulled onto Emily's arm, kneeled down on the ground, and bowed his head. Seeing this, Emily had also reluctantly got down on her knees. I'm sorry. Please come back. Let's start over again. I'm sorry for saying terrible things. All right. Please look up, both of you. They both thought that I had agreed to get back together with George. George and Emily looked up with smiles on their faces. Well then, let's get back together. I crossed my arms deliberately and pretended to think about it. And then this is what I said. Hmm. I've actually thought about it, but I still don't want to get back together with you. It's too bad that you both got down on your knees and apologized to the person who you looked down on. You two should just continue to live together in solitude. That's what you two deserve. George and Emily opened their mouths and looked very surprised. Then their faces turned bright red, probably from embarrassment and anger. You! I can't believe you took advantage of us! That's enough! You're the one who's done enough. No matter what you say, I have no intention of getting back together at all. As I said this, Emily looked frightened and stepped back. Then, somebody had come over. To my surprise, it was two police officers. Apparently, one of our neighbors saw me being harassed and called the police. George and Emily rushed to explain themselves, but in the end, they were taken away by the police. After that, they never came to my parents' house again. Rumor has it that Rachel's whereabouts were unknown, and since the divorce between them had not yet been finalized, the family's finances were collapsing due to George and Emily being forced to pay for purchases made with George's credit card by Rachel. So George and Emily had sold the house and are living on George's pay from his company which has terrible working condition and from Emily's pay from her part-time job. As a matter of fact, I knew where Rachel was and her current situation. A former co-worker of mine happened to see Rachel in town and told me about it. Supposedly, Rachel was carrying her son in a stroller with a large luggage. Her face was gaunt and she didn't seem to have the same energy that she used to have. I don't care what happens to Rachel, but I just only hope that the child is healthy. And also, George had contacted me once. I had been told by my lawyer that I shouldn't block incoming calls just in case, so I had followed the lawyer's advice. At that time, I was checking my phone, so I answered his call. Oh, Diana. Long time no talk. I actually wanted to tell you something, which is why I called you. What? We have nothing to talk about anymore. Um, actually... I went to the clinic the other day, and I finally found out that the reason why you weren't getting pregnant was because there was something wrong with me. I'm so sorry for believing in what my mom only had said to me instead of believing in you, Diana. I was so stupid. I'm truly sorry. Even if you understand now, it's too late. Don't contact me again, ever. I said that and hung up on him. I hope that he will regret whatever he has done to me for the rest of his life. I felt as if everything was finally over. After that, I started to date my colleague at work. I told him I was divorced, but thankfully he said he didn't mind at all. 
We continue to date, and recently he proposed to me. Of course, I agreed to marry him, and he had to transfer, so I took the opportunity to move to a faraway town with him. This would really cut the ties I had with George and Emily. And now, I am pregnant with our long awaited child. Just as my OBGYN had told me, there was nothing wrong with me. My husband was very happy and vowed to take care of me and the child for the rest of his life. I want to take good care of our child and my husband forever. My heart was filled with excitement as I thought of the happy life that awaited me with my child and my husband.